Hey folks, this is Jay Hackman here, bringing you another hardware unboxing slash first impressions of the Corsair Carbide 275R gaming mid tower case. Um, this case is tempered glass front panel. It has uh, screen removable screen filters for the top, front, and bottom air intakes. Uh, there should be another one right there, yeah. The case front panel is removable. It is a bit stiff. And back behind there, there is another removable dust folder. So, the front, you can see a little better there, it has two little tabs at the bottom that it locks into. There are three white LED lights right here uh, that will cast down and kind of slightly illuminate the logo on the front of the Corsair uh, front panel. Up top you have your top uh, I.O., USB 3.0. Uh, headphones, uh, microphone, and uh, reset power on. In the back, <clears throat> didn't have that screwed in very well. I didn't think it mattered all that much, but okay. The tempered glass front panel is pretty sturdy, apparently. And on that note, the reason that those were so loose was because in watching a lot of videos from people talking about this case, I have seen a lot of people report that they don't like the Allen screws. And you saw how much I was messing around with that case before that came off. The way I figure it is like this. If you're gonna be getting in and out of the case, just lightly tighten up the screws just like I did. I've already opened up this case prior to this video. So that's why those were loose and I would not recommend leaving them loose uh, when you have the case uh, when you're moving the case around, as you can see why. But with that being said, the grommets or the front panel is relatively strong. That did just fall on a wood floor and not shatter from about three feet. So that is pretty good. Uh, um, a lot of things that people are talking about are right here on these four screw holes. Uh, the threads are just not very special. Uh, they're they're kind of crappy from what I understand. Let me grab those grommets back up. Before I lose them, that is the other thing that everybody is mentioning, is that <laughs> they're all gone, other than uh, the two that I picked back up. These little grommets are kind of crappy because they fall out. Now on the other side of the screws, there's a little piece of rubber to protect the other side. This one has two pieces of rubber on it for some reason. This one must have been special. Just one piece of rubber. And now I know why that one was special because this one has no rubber on it. <laughs> so somebody on the assembly part of this the side window assembly, they definitely cheaped out on. Um, I bought it because it was clean looking. Uh, so as far as for me, it works out just fine. But uh, for others, it might be a little bit wonky. Let's put this camera up a little bit. See how that looks, that's better. So, I am now missing none of the grounds. I have all the grounds. Good. 
Um, a simple way to fix this grommet coming out problem. Not that it's that bad in my opinion. They hold in there pretty tight. If you're having an issue, a dab, just a little dab of uh, acetyl or whatever, super glue, um, would uh, get these to stay in place forever. They would not go anywhere. But dropping it like that, only two of them came out on on the case for me, so I don't know why everybody's losing them. I guess everybody must be dropping it like I did. But uh, those were just slightly hand tightened in screws. Um, the reason that everybody's complaining about it is because these are indeed Allen screws. And they did that for the clean line look. Let's flip the case around to the back side here, like I was going to say. One of the things that I'm not real sure about is how come this part doesn't have a dust filter if you're not going to have a fan that covers all the way up there. I don't know of any fans that do, so it's a little bit odd to me for a case that has all this screening. How come that part isn't screened? But these uh, thumb screws, they are self-retaining, so they don't come out on their own. It's easy as that for the back plate to come off. Which is pretty convenient, I gotta say. On the back side here, we have some reading material. Probably says not to lightly tighten the glass like that and drop it on the ground. SSD, 2.5 inch SSD holders. Uh, there's two more right here uh, that aren't the quick connect SSD holders. You can see that you just pop your SSD right in here and I believe it just locks it in place. Um, I've never used any like this before. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm not really sure how an SSD could fit in there like that though. But I have seen other people have them in here so apparently it is a thing. Um, as far as it goes, you've got some cable pass-throughs right here. I've seen a lot of really clean builds come out of this case. It's only been around for about a month now. It is the replacement for the Corsair um, 270R, which did not have the timber glass side panel. And it had uh, a mesh front edge. This top screen, it slides around pretty easily. It's a little bit hard to grab onto. Um, but yeah, on the 270R, this leading edge has mesh on the edges instead of being a solid front like you see here. Uh, it does seem to be pretty resistant to fingerprints. I do have some fingerprints on here at this point, but it is pretty resistant to fingerprints, which I like quite a bit. On the front inside here, you can see that we have two 120 millimeter fans. They do look to be pretty similar to the ones on the Corsair H100i V2, uh, but I'm guessing these aren't high static pressure because they're not designed to probably go in a high static pressure environment. There is another uh, grommet right here for cords to pass through from your power supply. Um, you can have your power supply set up in two different ways inside here. It's not restricted to one direction from what I can tell. Uh, so I think you can either have it sucking in air from here and then pushing it out the back, or you can have it sucking in air from inside of your case and pushing it out the back. So whichever you would want to do is what I guess you would end up in that situation with. Uh, I will be testing that out. I've got a couple ideas of how to test the way the air is flowing through the case. I've heard some people talk about these uh, uh, basements and how they add excess heat to the graphics card. I'm just not sure how that would be the case though because the power supply brings air in through the main fan and pushes it out the back of the unit. So I don't understand how that would be the case. This case does have uh, a couple of hard drive sleds on top of the four places that you can hook up your SSDs. You've also got two HDD bays um, and it comes with a Little hardware pack in here. The standoffs are already pre-mounted on the inside of this case for 
your motherboard, so there shouldn't be really any standoffs in here. Just a plethora of fan screws, some zip ties, some longer screws probably for mounting radiators, I'm guessing. I'm not sure what those longer screws are for. Um, as far as the HDD bays, eh, they're nice because they're toolless. They're not nice because you have to bend the plastic out to do it. Grab one of one hard drives. This is a new three terabyte uh, Toshiba hard drive here. So there are three little pins or two little pins on the inside here. So what you want to do is you want to line those up with the holes on your hard drive. One, two, and then you just slightly pry out this side and feed those into the other holes and now your hard drive is secured. So that's why I don't like it. If you're doing this regularly, you probably would end up uh, with some fatigue on the plastic. It might break. Teach their own on that though. If you think that matters. I don't personally mind. I like the fact that it's toolless more than caring about that. So you can see that slots just like that. Right into the back there. Uh, and then your SATA cables can come right through the up here or uh, through this one. So really wherever you want to put it. These cables here just go to the front I.O. and then one of them goes down to that LED, uh, which is powered off your front I.O. power. Um, the cord plugs are right here. So you've got LED power, LED negative power, power switch, reset switch. So one's power LED. I guess they're both power LED. You just have to have a plus and minus one. Uh, and I guess that's just probably for the front LED there. Uh, HD audio for up top and then your USB 3.0 uh, two header. But it's nice how they got them routed right there. The only problem I have at all with it is that when you go to run other stuff, I guess you'll just have to pry them over to the side like so. Um, let's see, is there anything else that's interesting to point out on this? I did hear a lot of people talking about the fact that this case isn't all that different. And uh, if you're looking at buying this case, I don't think you're probably looking for something that's that different. I was looking for something that was pretty understated. Um, kind of looking for like a sleeper look. Uh, everybody wants RGB these days and I'm not trying to be uh, my little pony over here. Uh, I will go with my gray and white build, uh, or gray, black gray and white build. And I think it'll suit me perfectly. I'll let you know how the airflow dynamics work with this basement. I've never had a case of the basement before. You can see right over here, this is what I'm coming from. Uh, no place for a rad to go into. Um, so, but I will tell you that case right there is much heavier gauge steel than this. I can feel this flex when I squeeze it, whereas on my old case I could stand on it. Uh, it was never a problem. I used to bring it to land parties and sit on it. Uh, so, uh, you know, it was quite the, uh, quite the beast as far as that goes. But, uh, it's time to upgrade to something new, something a little sleeker, something that'll support some radiators. Um, so that's uh, that's why I picked up this case. So this is my preliminary uh, video on this. Uh, I will be keeping y'all informed on how it goes. Tomorrow I'll be doing my build log uh, where I put the Asus or ASRock uh, Master uh, AC Wi-Fi motherboard in with a AMD 2700X um, processor. Uh, we'll get the Corsair H100 IV2 with the AM2 bracket on um, and power it up with a Corsair um, TXC power supply. Is that TXC? Yeah, I think so. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be pretty well a Corsair build here um, and I uh, expect it to come out pretty good. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more and uh, 
Check out my build vlog tomorrow. Thanks for watching.